Perhaps at some point, if you're a preacher, you were given the gift of a sermon template, a means by which you could preach any sermon anytime. Perhaps it begins with the introduction. The introduction leads to an interrogative, a question, and that question is answered through three or four points leading to a dramatic conclusion. And that template really is a gift because as you go on through your preaching ministry, it allows you to know exactly how you're gonna approach each text. But the problem is, when at some point that template gets tired and you realize that not every text fits the predetermined template. What do you do at that point? What some people do is they just decide that that text will in fact fit that template and they force that template upon it until it fits what they've already decided they're going to preach or how they're going to preach it. And the problem is that's not really fair to the text. Our objective is not to impress something on the text that's not there, but rather just the opposite, to allow the text to breathe. Or we might say it this way, you study and you study the text until its structure and its substance and its spirit, its tone all becomes buoyant and it comes to the surface and then you, you preach that. Because in reality, we're not trying to preach sermons, we're trying to preach text. And this brings us to the issue of genre. What understanding the genre of scripture is doing is it's saying, God, you've given us one complete word, but yet you've given us that word in multiple genres. So one word, but many voices, if you will. So true, text-driven preaching is preaching the word of God while at the same time being sensitive to the voice of God. Now, why would we do that? Well, we do this for this very simple reason. There is actual meaning at the structural level of a text. Now, stay with me here for a second. Oftentimes, when somebody approaches a text of scripture and they wonder how to preach it, they're asking one question in their mind. What does this text mean? That's the real goal that we're after, to say what God has said. But there has to be a question that comes before that one, and that is, how is this text structured? So when I first study a text, I don't look to find the main idea, the exegetical idea, the textual idea. I'm looking at the structure of this text. Why you ask that first? Well, because there's actual meaning at the structural level. So once you understand the structure, then you have a frame by which you can add all the substance. Whether you're working from the chapter level to the, the sentence and clause level down to the word level, you need a frame on which you can hang all of this content that you find. And once you understand the structure of the text, is it a narrative with multiple scenes? Is it a, uh, an epistle with several points? Once you find that structure and you find that substance, then you're ready to identify the spirit of the text. By spirit, I don't mean the Holy Spirit. I mean lowercase s. This is the author intended emotional design of the text. That really comes to you once you understand the substance of the spirit. You realize that the author gave this in such a way that it has a, a tone to it. And that leads us to our definition of text-driven preaching. Text-driven preaching is translating and communicating a text of scripture in a sermon that is influenced by the substance, structure, and the spirit of the text. In other words, we're not preaching sermons, we're preaching the text. That's the, the main idea. So the next few weeks together, we're going to look at the different genres of Scripture, and I'm going to turn to the book that Jordan and Holman had just released, Recapturing the Voice of God. The idea is that this would be, book would be a, a reference tool that pastors could keep at their elbow at all times to pull off the shelf to help them when they're preaching through a parable or a proverb or one of the different genres. They don't know exactly how to wrap their minds around it, or more specifically, they don't know exactly what sermon structure best facilitates this specific genre of Scripture. So the idea is to come along and wash the feet of pastors in this way. And one more thought by way of introduction. All this idea of understanding the genre of the text is driven by our theology of preaching. It could best be summed up in 2 Corinthians 4, 12, after Paul gave his classic text in verses 1 through 6 of being um, servants and vessels for Christ. He says this in verse 12, so death is at work in us, but life in you. The context of this passage in 2 Corinthians 4 is not preaching specifically, but it's ministry generally. But certainly what's true about ministry generally is true about preaching specifically. Paul is saying this, that my understanding of ministry is self-sacrificial. I'm going to die, but in this death, you're going to live. Really, that's a wonderful metaphor for preaching. What preaching is, is not coming up and fronting my personality, helping people to show how helpful I can be, or even bringing insights into the text. That's not the point. The point is, is that preaching is deferring to the word of God, deferring to the needs of other people, then the death to my right to be thought of as intellectual or engaging or funny or hip or whatever else it is, in that death people might 
live. And that death to life metaphor seems familiar because that really is the gospel. So we could say it this way, that the best metaphor for preaching the gospel really is the gospel. We die to ourselves so that other people may live for the person who died so that they might live. That's what text-driven preaching is all about. So let's get to it with our first genre, how do you preach an Old Testament narrative? 